Hello everyone. So today I was uh, trying to fetch something from Jira using REST API because I was doing some quick check and I also received uh, not one but couple of uh, questions on a similar topic. So using REST API of course you can do a lot of wonderful things and one such common thing that you may want to do is retrieve work logs from your issues. Now work logs or time spent on those issues, it is actually very important because uh, people rely on this to not only report, but also to use this information for maybe billing or maybe they want to understand the time people are spending because, you know, eventually when it comes to doing some work, people end up trying to figure out the capacity or they need this information for planning. And of course, it depends whether you're following Agile or not. But uh, usually people do track time. And uh, it has to be done in, in, in some companies or in some situations. It is also a legal requirement so or, or basically a requirement for your job. Basically, you're, you're supposed to log your work. Now, there are a lot of things that you need to do using, of course, uh, this information. But to retrieve it quickly and easily is very important. And let me show you how we can do very simple things, like something very simple, very quickly using, of course, REST API. So today what we'll do, we'll retrieve uh, work logs. And uh, there is, of course, one endpoint. And that endpoint is uh, basically uh, nothing but uh, when, you, when, you, when you retrieve an issue, you just need to use slash work log and, or work logs, I believe, and it will give you the issues. So first, let us find some issues in our Jira instance. So I will go to my Jira uh, issue navigator and I will search for some issues where we have work log. So you can do something like time spent and uh, time spent is not empty, right? It's a simple, simple uh, JQL. And what you need to do, you need to simply, let us say we, we need to retrieve time log for proc one. So what you can do, you can uh, type in your Jira URL, then REST API, and then uh, maybe proc one. So if you type in, it will of course give you the issue, but it will also give you, uh, I mean, not not only not the issue, but the JSON of your issue. And if you search for work log, so you do have something called as a work log here. So this is great because you can retrie uh, retrieve uh, it like this as, as well. But, and by the way, if you're doing something similar using a JQL, because you can also parse a JQL. So let us see, let us see what we can do. So let us say we have, uh, I'll just save it first. So save as time spent. So this is my JQL and uh, we have 20 issues in the in the list. So I can do here uh, Jira, blah, blah, uh, Jira REST API, Jira, not Jira, REST API latest search and uh, JQL um, is equal to time spent. I think there is something wrong, which is fine. And I'm just trying to, oh, come on. Let me just take a look at the exact, I have this in my list, one of my script. Okay. So you need to use not this, come on. <laughs> it's okay. There is no slash. It has to be question mark. Search question mark. Okay. Uh, what is this? JQL. Oh, I need to use uh, filter is equal to. Come on. Yep. Okay, perfect. So you can also retrieve uh, multiple issues. Of course, uh, REST API is limited to basically, um, I mean, there's, there is always a limit. You can't really retrieve more than 1000. So you have to basically do it uh, again and again, basically using the number. Let us say if you're trying to retrieve 5,000 issues, then you have to make five calls or more than five calls, something like that. So basically you can always re retrieve multiple issues. So in this, of course, JSON, you will have issue ID and then you can uh, go through those issues and you can then do, then do something like slash work log. So when you do slash work log, you can actually retrieve uh, the, uh, the work logs, of course, and uh, this will be empty for uh, issues where you don't really have any work log. So for example, if I, if I, if I do the same thing for uh, proc two, there is no work log, which is, which is fine. But for proc one, we do have some issues. And if you look here, 
there are certain things that I want to show you. So you, you do have something called as a work log. And I know it is not a pretty format. I need to install that pretty JSON printer, whatever it is. But let me do the same thing using uh, the using curl. So I do have, I believe, uh, one curl command, which I can definitely show you. So basically what I need to do, I need to simply do, uh, so I'm basically doing the same thing using curl, but uh, I'm of course using my token. And if I do proc one, and okay, we have sim something similar, similar, like JSON, which is not really looking good, but there's one very nice utility called JQ, which we can use. So now we have, we have this pretty look. Now I'll probably just, First, take a look at the JSON here. So basically what we need to do in this JSON, we have something called as work logs. And depending upon number of issues or number of work logs, you may have one or two or three items. And then if you look here, within work logs, you have this information about uh, the time spent. So bare minimum you need, uh, I, th I think if you're doing something with the work log or if you're doing something programmatically, always retrieve the ID because this ID is unique to this work log, right? So you need, uh, I think, uh, created date, when this work log was added, time spent, and also ID. And I think you, you also need, uh, I believe, the author, because, yeah, you also need to know the author, but author is not something that you can retrieve directly. So within author, you need to go to the account ID. So let, let us let us try to retrieve this information. Let, let us try to parse this, J, this JSON. So when you're doing something with uh, JQ, you need to basically do a few things. So let me show you. So this is, of course, my my let me just increase the size of this and uh, what i will do is i need I'll, I'll basically retrieve work logs first so so when you're using json or uh, using jq you need to know of course what your json is like so i know that my work logs are stored in this element work logs so i can type in here work logs it will basically retrieve the same thing but only those work logs so you can see here it will basically get rid of those uh, elements on top so it will start from the work logs and then I need to, uh, within, within this, I need to do a few, few more things. Basically, I need to retrieve the, uh, let us start with time spent. So I'll, I'll pipe it first and then I will say, okay, within, uh, this is of course something that you need to learn if you are trying to uh, play with uh, GQ. It is of course not not very, very difficult. So the first thing to retrieve is uh, so you have to you have, you have to basically type in uh, backslash, and then you have to type in uh, these uh, parentheses or oh, no b brackets parentheses. I keep I I, I always get confused with this. <laughs> so time spent time spent is the uh, actual there there is something called as time spent. Let me show you time spent. Basically, you need this time spent here, uh, not here. Let me just take a look at, come on, not, okay. Work log, perfect. Let us see if it retreats, it, it, if it, give, yeah, it will actually give us something, but I'm, I was just trying to show you. Uh, time spent. Okay, so we have something called as time spent here, which is of course three hour, and we might also need uh, along with this. Uh, let us start it with ID of the work log. So again, I'll do backslash bracket comma, and within this bracket, I'll type in here uh, dot ID, and now we have the ID. Similarly, let us also retrieve uh, the created date. So same thing. And I'm doing it very quickly, but uh, you just need to make sure that you use backslash and then, you know, these braces, parenthesis, I guess, parenthesis, I, I think parenthesis. Uh, okay, and then created. Okay, with you, so we have the date. And the last thing that you may want to retrieve is, uh, let us try to retrieve the author and then account ID. Let us look at the author. And th then within author, we have uh, the account ID. All right, let us see if this works. So I'll basically go here and uh, I'll do comma, comma, backslash, and then uh, author. And then within within author, we need dot account ID. And that is it, it works, perfect. So it works perfectly nice. And uh, let us run it again. So we have these uh, two items. So we are looking at proc one. And let us go back to proc one issue. 
So I'll just go back to Jira and uh, I will try to log some time on proc1. Proc1, let us open this in Jira and try to, you know, add some time. Okay, so this is my issue and I will log here. Where is my issue? Uh, I just need to make it like this. Perfect work log. So we have two entries here. Uh, let me add one more work log. Let us say I worked four hours today. And uh, you can of course have a description. We are not really doing any description here in the retrieval, but we can. So if we go back to this, and if you run it again, it will ret uh, return us, uh, of course, not today. Uh, yeah, this one. So this is basically four hours that we just entered. And this is great, but you also may want to do something more with this. You may also want to dump it somewhere. So you can always do something like, uh, you know, temp.csv. Uh, and this will be dumped to a file. And if you now look at uh, this file, it will have these uh, workload items. And uh, basically, it will help you uh, to basically, you know, do something on it. On top of it, you can actually now, because it's a script, you can then uh, run it using cron. Or maybe, I mean, the main thing here is, of course, REST API. I mean, I'm not really doing this um, I mean, you may want to, because I'm using shell, uh, because shell works perfectly fine. And I, I just, you know, use my scripts, my simple shell scripts, but I often use VBA macros in Excel or uh, any other programming language, as long as you know the endpoint. And I think I, I've explained this many times before, but you should keep list of your common endpoints handy with you. So that is it. That is it guys. And uh, I hope, I hope this video was useful. And uh, and you learn something, and you learn something new. Thank you very much. Bye bye.